Hello, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Does Warren Gatland regret taking the Wales job for the second time? I'm talking about that in this video because of comments he made on the BBC's Scrum 5 podcast, which was a really, really interesting interview. So getting into all of that, looking at Wales ahead of the World Cup, some of the players that won't be available to them and all sorts of things to do with where Welsh rugby and in particular the men's international side where it currently is. So drop a comment down below. Let me know about your views on anything I touch upon on this video or anything else that springs to mind. Like the video and subscribe to the channel as well. But let's get into it. So this is following that BBC Scrum 5 uh, podcast, the interview they had with Warren Gatland on there. It's the latest episode. I would encourage any of you to go and listen to it in full because it is really, really interesting. You've probably seen some of the quotes that have emerged from it. It's in a lot of the papers here in the UK today that I've been looking at, which basically uh, revolves around Warren Gatland saying that had he known about the issues within Welsh rugby, then he probably wouldn't have taken the job for a second time. He wouldn't have necessarily come back to the national team. He would have probably gone elsewhere. And that's kind of the headline from this interview. And it is a really punchy statement, but it's a classic case, actually, I think, and why I'm encouraging you to listen to the interval interview in full is because the quote in isolation, it is what he said, but you lose the context of the whole chat. And it makes it seem like, and I put the um, title of this video as Does Warren Gatlin Regret Returning to Wales? On the one hand, when you look at what he said, you think, well, yeah, of course he does. Surely he must do. If he's saying that had he known about the issues that the Welsh rugby was facing, he'd have gone somewhere else, then he must regret it. But actually, he goes into more in the interview, which I'll touch on in just a moment, that suggests maybe that's not quite the case. What I would say is I do find it strange for Warren Gatland, someone who was the coach from, what was it, in 2008, around then, from 2008 to about 2019, had a huge amount of success with Wales, understood Welsh rugby, I thought, to quite a great deal when you're the head coach of the national team for that amount of time. I find it a little surprising that he seems to have been as unaware as he was about the issues that the the regions were facing, the problems that players might have, the union, all sorts of things that were going on. I find it strange that he wasn't aware of that. And because we all knew, I felt like for quite a while, a lot of people thought that the performance of the Welsh team and that golden generation of Warburton and Roberts and Alan Wynne jones and Tipperick, all those players, everyone kind of knew that it was papering over some of the cracks in Welsh rugby. I think it's been exposed to quite the extent they were papering over it over the last couple of years. But because of all of that, I was surprised that Warren Gatton didn't necessarily realise the challenge that was facing him. But maybe it's just one of those things that our perception of what we think for the head coach, how much he knows about everything else that is going on in the game, maybe we think they know more than they actually do. But the reason that I said that it's worth listening to the full interview and getting the full context of Gatlin's comments is because to me, he still sounded pretty engaged in that interview. And it didn't sound like someone who was really irritated that they had been missold what the job was and what the challenges were. He sounded incredibly engaged still in the project of Welsh rugby. And I think Warren Gatlin's a pretty straight talking, straight shooting head coach. He's not an Eddie Jones, for example, where everything he says you have to take with a pinch of salt. You don't necessarily get to the bottom of what he truly believes. I think Warren Gatland is pretty forthright and he was in this conversation as well. He still spoke about progressing the team, getting the Welsh public back on side and he said one thing which was quite revealing really in that in a strange way he said it's a positive because it's a reset for the whole of Welsh rugby, not just the men's team but the whole of it, the regions, the women's team, everything to do with it and I thought he seemed pretty candid in that. So that's why I don't think Warren Gatland regrets returning to Wales. But I do think it's quite fascinating the fact that <laughs> had he realised the challenge or had he realised the issues within the game in the country, then he maybe would have gone elsewhere. The other thing which was quite fascinating that he touched on in that interview was the players that won't be going to the World Cup with Wales. You might have, well, most of you, I'm sure, watching this would have seen 
the players that have made themselves unavailable or can no longer be selected. So I'll just go through them and go through what Warren Gatland said, essentially. So let's start with Alan Wynne-Jones, who has retired from international rugby. Quite shockingly, seemed to be out of nowhere, a player of his stature. Many of us probably expected him to get that almost testimonial game or that game that you know is his last match for Wales that is build up and it's all about him in the build up. But he has retired ahead of the World Cup and Warren Gatland said that it's something they've actually been speaking to him about for quite a long time. So it hasn't been a huge shock to them behind the scenes. And he ultimately decided that at this moment in time, he uh, thought it was the best moment to hang up his boots. The other person who within just hours of Alan Wynne-Jones also retired from international rugby was Justin Tipperick. Now, Tipperick was apparently due to fitness concerns. Justin Tipperick basically having to deal with a few different injuries or uh, little bits and pieces at the moment, which means he's not fully fit. And therefore, he wasn't sure if he would be in a position to get himself to the World Cup. And he didn't want to be part of a camp if he couldn't be fully fit, essentially. So that was the reason that Justin Tipperick has decided to step away from it. Then we get on to Reese Webb and Corey Hill. Now, these are a bit more to do with the financial situation in Wales. So Reese Webb was offered a two-year contract in France. I don't think it's been publicised what club he's joining, but it's been reported that it's Beiritz. And I think he was offered a deal within Wales, which was maybe a one-year deal. He's been offered a two-year deal in France. But the other thing, which again, they mentioned in that interview, which is always a fascinating extra detail, which probably gets lost a little bit, is that if you're a rugby player in France, if you then retire in France, then the French authorities, I can't remember the exact amount of time, but it's for the next couple of years, will continue to pay you. Not your full salary, but you almost get some sort of... um, pension in a way as a rugby player for a couple of years in France. So Reese Webb is 34. He hasn't really played for Wales for a long time. I know he came back in at the end of the Six Nations, one man of the match against Italy. Looked pretty impressive. I would imagine would have a good chance going to the World Cup. But he's got a one-year offer on the table in Wales or one or two year. I think it was one year. Or he's got a two-year option in France and then possibly another two years after that where he would still get paid. And if he was able to get a one-year contract extension on top of that three years, then he could be looking at getting paid for the next five years, which is something that happens for all rugby players in France and is an important element, I suppose, in this story. That's why he's not going. And then Corey Hill is another kind of interesting one. Corey Hill, who has been playing in Japan, that contract ended. He was hoping to get a contract in Wales or England or France, which would allow him to go to the World Cup. And he basically hasn't had any contract offers on the table. He has had another offer from Japan, playing in some of the lower leagues in Japan. Their season starts in September and it's an eight game season. So particularly with what was about to happen, because I believe he, from what Warren Gatlin said, he signed that contract um, just before London Irish basically went into administration and there were going to be 50 odd players from London Irish that would be looking for new contracts. Because he didn't, because Corey Hill didn't have an option from England, Wales or France, he decided to take that contract in Japan. So he could be back maybe for the Six Nations, maybe when it comes November, December time, he might be picked up by one of the regions or a different club and will still be in contention for Wales. But he had to make a decision for his family at this moment in time to take the contract that was on the table and that's to go back to Japan. The one other one I just wanted to throw in is Joe Hawkins because the young guy who's been playing in the centre, he's looked impressive for Wales since he's come into the team and is probably one of those younger players that Warren Gatland could maybe look to utilise and give more experience to at this World Cup. He's not available because he's going to be playing in England. That is the one where Warren Gatland said that was pretty disappointing, that a young guy with his career ahead of him has decided to take a contract in England rather than play for the Welsh national team. That was the one that he said did disappoint him and he maybe didn't quite understand quite as much. So that's where they are. There's lots of different interesting things from the into. Um, and overall, looking ahead to the World Cup, Wales are still in a tough spot, aren't they? And I think, I think even though they're on the right side of the draw at the World Cup, I think the World Cup could be pretty tough for them. But if they have got someone like Warren Gatland at the helm, who is still engaged in the project of Welsh rugby, who is seeing it now at what is pretty much its lowest point in terms of the professional era and all the issues that are going on off the field. Could get pretty a lot tougher on the field at the World Cup, we'll wait and see. But if he can ride that out, maybe Welsh rugby can move forward. Maybe, as he said, it is a chance to reset and there can be a positive that comes out of this. We'll see how they perform in the World Cup warm-ups. 
We'll see what that team starts to look at. Traditionally, Warren Gatlin has always been able to get his Welsh teams incredibly fit, at least, to be able to execute the game plan when it comes to the World Cup. Will that still be the case? I think it's going to be a long road ahead. I think they will struggle at the World Cup, but we shall wait and see. Let me know your views on everything I've touched on in the comment section down below. Like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.